Carlos Saisu with ESPN LA on the road to recovery presented by Hogue Orthopedic Institute here with Dr. Byer, Dr. B. Let, let's first take our fans behind the scenes. Two weeks ago, we recorded an episode about Mike Trout. And before we could even publish it and make it public for everybody to, to learn from, he was already pulled from his rehab assignment. And now we find out he is shut down for the season with a torn meniscus. Doc, how do you feel? Well, um, you know, this is rather distressing news. I mean, he played two innings and then felt something pop in his knee, um, sat down. They supposedly did a repeat MRI scan, which did not show a meniscal tear. Um, but he had persistent pain when he tried to go back to baseball activities. I guess they came back. He flew back to L.A., uh, repeated the MRI scan. And according to the reports, this repeated MRI scan shows a new meniscal tear to quote what I've been able to dig up so far. I haven't seen the scan itself, obviously. There's a new meniscus tear in a different part of the meniscus. Um, you know, it's funny how sports sometimes gets like politics and you start to talk about conspiracy theories and what's really going on and who's who knows what and who's hiding what. Um, but I think there's certainly a, a bit of this going on right now concerning Mike Trout. Yeah, it's always he's always been a quiet athlete. So when it comes to telling the stories of what's going on with his body and, and why he's been so, again, we use this word, especially in the last month of road to recovery, injury prone. Um, who Who's better to tell his story than himself? But he's not the one to share it. So we can't help but to speculate. Well, I also think that I'm not sure that we got 100% the full information with the first injury and surgery back in eight, late April. The surgery was in early May. Um, you know, the reports came out that he had a meniscectomy, which means part of his meniscus was removed. Um, nothing repaired, not sewn back together, removed. That typically is a four to six week recovery. Um, the fact that he couldn't come back in that time frame leads one to speculate that either they really did repair part of the meniscus and have to wait longer for it to heal, or there was some other damage going on in the knee, maybe a little bit of degenerative disease that they microfractured or cleaned up, and that takes a little longer recovery than a pure meniscectomy. So that's the first part of the conspiracy. What's taking so long? Okay. So then he finally comes back and plays two innings, one at bat, um, and experiences symptoms again. And now we're confronted with the idea that there's a new meniscus tear separate from the original one, different spot than the original one. So there's three different ways that you can interpret what that means. Number one, maybe that meniscal tear was there at the time of the first surgery and it was missed. No one is no one. The best orthopedic surgeon in the world is a thousand percent at getting every arthroscopic procedure perfect. Okay, so that's that's possible and it's no one's fault. It just happens. Okay, so that's that's one possibility. Number two, there was an area there when he had the first surgery that might have been partially torn, incompletely torn, torn within the substance of the meniscus so it wasn't visible with the arthroscope. And that subsequently went on to become a full tear when he returned to baseball activities. That's possible too. The third possibility is that they really didn't do just a meniscectomy. They did a meniscal repair at the original surgery. And that repair, it, it retore. Okay. Uh, as I've said to you before, I think on our episodes, the instance of this happening is 30 or 35%. That's nothing unusual. One of the risks that we explain to patients when we're going to do a meniscal repair is that there's about a 30 or 35 percent chance that this is not going to heal and we're going to have to go back in and remove the piece that's torn uh, rather than repair it. The repair failed. That's certainly a possibility here. That would also kind of explain, you know, where it said he heard a pop in the knee uh, during the rehab assignment and the two innings, and that might have been a suture letting go from a meniscal repair. Might have been scar tissue. There's a other explanations, too. I'm not trying to be Karnak the Magnificent here, but those are all the possibilities. So here we are now. He's going to need a second surgery, and I guarantee you this time they're not going to repair meniscus. They're going to remove the piece that's torn. You don't take that chance twice. 
Um, and that basically does it for him for this season. So hopefully Perry Manesian was very positive about this. He said, put a bet on it. He's going to hit 70 home runs next year and blah, 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 and win the MVP. Great, Perry, from your mouth to God's ears. But let's get him through the second surgery first and get him back on the road to recovery. Doc, you mentioned that 30% of that possibility happening. That's that's 30% for us normal folks, right? When, if we were ever to get a meniscal procedure. But this is Mike Trout, who is built like a tank and is so agile on the field, so powerful in the batter's box. His frame, his stature, how does that affect his return and his rehab? So first, just in terms of the potential to heal and the healing process, in spite of the fact that he's Superman and built the way he is, his body doesn't heal any faster than yours or mine. So the healing process is the healing process, no matter who you are, unless you have some comorbidity like diabetes or some other health issue that decreases your healing potential. His his timeline for healing a tissue is the same as Allen's and Carlos, okay? Uh, the second part of your statement about him being so big and strong and everything else, I kind of almost think has gotten to the point where it works against him. So many of these injuries, we're, we're starting to call Mike Trout injury prone, and I don't think it's because of his anatomy or his physiology. I think it's because of the way that he trains and works out. I think he's putting too much stress on the real power muscles to try to hit home runs. That's that's baseball today. Hate to say it, but baseball today is hit it out of the park when you're a hitter. Don't bunt. Don't sacrifice fly. Don't, don't hit behind the runner. None of those things anymore. It's hit it out of the ballpark. And that's what guys are training to try to do. So there is a price to be paid for that. And, and that's what Mike Trout was doing in the beginning of the season. Such a hot start with 10 home runs. 10 home runs. In the time yep. he was active. So you can't help but to blame Angels fans, Mike Trout fans, and just those around the organization to be optimistic. He went in the season, 2021, we talked about, you mentioned injury prone, 2021 cap strain, 36 games. The year after, back inflammation, missed 119 games or played 119 games. 2023, the hand injury, 82 games played. So all that uh, optimism culminating into the season only to play a career low 29 games. Doc, how do you think he can make Perry Manazian's prediction come true? Well, I think that he's got to give some serious thought to changing who Mike Trout is. Maybe Mike Trout needs to try to be built more like Garrett Anderson or a player from the past that comes to mind who was, you know, nimble, quick. Mike Trout was actually pretty quick for, for a big guy, um, but just more uh, balanced in terms of what their workout is rather than this huge emphasis on strength and power. I, I think that he is at a point in his career where he has to think about that. You know, kind of the anti-Barry Bonds philosophy. Barry Bonds, when he was a Pittsburgh Pirate, was built like a skinny little kid. Um, and then, you know, to keep up with McGuire and Sosa, and he used some substances that made him look a little different, and it changed you his workout regimen. Say, and he looked, and he looked, looked a lot different. And he looked a lot different. Um, Mike Trout maybe needs to go back the other way and, and try to look more like a young Barry Bonds. Wow. Just to imagine a lean Mike Trout almost would feel comical at this point. But if that's your outlook for the rest of his career, I mean, I, I think Angels fans have to go that way in order to see their superstar come back because it, it, it's tragic. It, it's He's one of MLB's biggest superstars and he can't be himself i agree and believe me if you and i are having this conversation like we are now this conversation is also happening in the front office of the big a so uh, you know it's not like i'm coming up with some magic idea here there's better minds than yours and mine that are having exactly the same conversation and and planning this for the future doc thanks a lot for joining us on the road to recovery it's sad. It, it really is sad to hear about Mike Trout and, and the bumps along the road that he's hitting on this road to recovery. But you can't help but to just at least see him return on the field, be healthy, and produce. And, and 
we must accept at this point we're not going to be seeing Mike Trout that we're used to. Well, and he'll be in the in the dugout, you know, helping his teammates. He's always been a team guy, so he'll be there in spirit. Um, along with them, he's not going to be sitting at home during this rehab. I guarantee you, we'll see him in the dugout at Angel Stadium, and we'll just once again. I've never said this before as an Angel fan. We'll see what next season brings. Well, we hope we could see him on the field sooner than later. Dr. B, thank you very much for joining us on the Road to Recovery, presented by Hope Orthopedic Institute.